back to the second episode of Dino Pets. Before I begin, I want to just let you know that I'm filming in the evening time and as you can hear, there's a lot of loud birds. Yes, they're all going to sleep and they're chirping really, really loud. I personally like the sound, but when you're filming a video, it's <laughs> a little bit annoying. Um, also, I thought I'd answer a few questions that came up in the comment section a few times. Number one, yes, this is replacing sea monkeys. Number two, no, it's not going to go on as long as sea monkeys because that did over 20 episodes. And number three, the videos will be going up each Sunday. Because if you're like me, you just... Sundays just suck. Like, nothing happens and all you can think is, oh, I've got to go to school tomorrow, I've got to go to work tomorrow, and it just, ugh. So I thought it would be something to look forward to on a Sunday, so, you know. Um, also, a few of you were disappointed I didn't actually get a dinosaur. I don't think that's possible, although saying that, if I did buy a chicken, chickens are like the closest living ancestors to the T-Rex. So I mean, there is a connection. I could have bought a chicken. But um, we have, obviously, the dino pet, and the dino pet I've named Terry. I hope that's okay. And Terry has a little friend called Ernie. So, you know, there are dinosaurs in this video. <laughs> but obviously it's called dino pet because of the plankton that's called dinoflagellates. So now onto the day and night schedule for your dino pet. And this is actually important, um, actually for the health of the plankton and actually for you to experience a bioluminescence. You won't be able to see it if you don't really follow these instructions. I mean, you'll see it a bit, but not to the fullest potential. So in California, it was getting light from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Here, it's probably getting light from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. So it's getting 13 hours of light, which is completely fine. They need 10 to 14 hours of light, 10 to 14 hours of darkness. The sunrise is quite early, but I'd say it's full on bright in here at 6 a.m. And then 7 p.m. is about the time I come up and spray down the crested gecko tanks. So that's when I, at the start of the week, um, I was putting it under the table. So it was a nice shaded area. But recently I've been changing that and I'll get to that in a minute. So at the start of the week, like straight off the back, it was bright and incredible and the brightness, I have to say, doesn't always last too long. It's sort of, you see it as it's moving, like it glows as it's moving. So you're not going to shake it and it just stays glowing for ages. It literally glows as it's moving. But it was really bright to see in person but on camera it was quite tricky to pick up. But eventually I found a wobble board a few days later and it sort of sat on there and wobbling whilst I captured this footage and as you can see you can see it it's a little bit grainy because for any of you camera people out there the ISO was 6400 so that's why it's so grainy but it definitely it was definitely bright even in the first few days this leads me on to a nice little segue here let's look at why these glow up and how they glow up when the dinoflagellates glow, they're actually producing bioluminescence. To make the luminescence, a light emitting compound is needed. So inside the dinos, they have a thing called luciferin. Each cell contains around 4,500 microsources, where luciferin is oxidized by the enzyme luciferase. Let me break it down for you. So luciferin reacts with ATP, a byproduct of photosynthesis. Together, the luciferin and the ATP create a new compound. This reacts with luciferous, which adds on an oxygen, creating a new compound that decays rapidly, emitting a photon of light. That's all happening to each dinoflagellate in a split second. We're merely watching a compound quickly perish. But this deteriorating compound has a purpose. It's thought that the dinos glow when they're disturbed. It's sort of like an alarm, not to warn off predators, but to bring attention to those predators, since they are prey to bigger animals in the sea. For example, dinos are food for shrimp. So if a shrimp were to try to eat them, they would glow to attract attention from other predators who prey on shrimp such as tuna. If a tuna quickly eats a shrimp, that could potentially save a whole load of dinos. Or, you know, a few of them might get scooped up in the tuna's mouth. But nevertheless, this clearly works, otherwise they wouldn't still be in existence today. Like crashing waves or moving ships, 
we can trick these dinos into glowing. It might seem mean, but actually it's encouraged that you shake them every night, not too violently, but just enough to replicate what they may experience in the wild. This will keep your dinos nice and healthy. So today is probably day six, and for the last two days, there have been a few changes. So the temperature here has certainly risen and it's been a lot brighter. So the temperature's been about 27 degrees in this room. It is a little bit too hot for the dino pet. Usually it should be about 25, but it hasn't seemed to cause too many problems. Plus they are near an open window, so I guess it's slightly cooler where they are. But 27 degrees, yeah, it's been very bright. And instead of putting the dino pet under the table where it's slightly darker, I've been putting it in the wardrobe where it's completely dark. Now, you have to remember that they need to be in darkness for 30 minutes before they will glow up. So I can't just put them in a wardrobe, shake them around, they're gonna glow up. They're not gonna do that. But what I have found in the last few days is it glows up so much more that this is why I filmed last night. I didn't have to, you know, have the ISO so high up, anything like that, and you could see it so clearly. I was so happy. So definitely better. Now what's interesting is in the little booklet you get, it does say on week one, it'll, it'll glow up, but by week four, it's gonna be insanely bright. So if this is only week one, can you imagine what week four is gonna be? So the last thing I wanna talk about today is something I noticed earlier in the week. I saw there was these little orange things on the bottom of the dino pet. So I contacted the people from Biopop who I have to say are incredibly friendly and helpful, very passionate about the dino flagellates, and they informed me that these are probably the dinos. So during the night I was shaking it around, trying to film it, and then I noticed they were all swimming around. Well, I'm not 100% sure if they swim or they're just moving with the current, but when I was filming them like this clip with the macro lens, I wasn't shaking it or anything, the water was just still swirling around or they were all moving around. And then I filmed with my microscope which got me even closer to these incredible little creatures. And I kind of feel like it puts more of a face to it, like obviously it doesn't put their face to it, but it makes it seem more real, like it is real. I don't think I'm making sense. You know what I mean though, because you just think, oh, this is liquid that glows up, but no, it's an actual living thing. Multiple living things that create this, and that's what's so amazing. But yeah, um, for the first week in total, this has been incredible and incredibly bright, and I can't wait till we get to week four when it's really, really, really bright. Now in the next episode, I'll probably be feeding them. I think they're due for a feed but I might need to empty the tank a little bit because I may have put too much in, I'm not sure. Also, I might make some sort of art with them. I'm kind of, I don't know what to do. I really wanted to put them on like a speaker and see if the beats through the speaker made them glow up. And maybe by next week it'll be a lot brighter so I can film a bit more. That'd be kind of cool. Anyway, leave your suggestions below. Make sure they're like ethical. I don't want to be mean to the plankton. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and thank you very much for watching.